Hello and welcome to Jurassic Reviews. Today we'll be starting the Series 2 line of Kenner's Jurassic Park toy line. The Series 2 line was released in 1994, along with a few re-releases from the first Series line. The Series 2 line contains some of the most sought after and hard to find figures in the entire Jurassic Park toy series. The figure we are looking at today is one of those harder to find ones, the Electronic Baryonyx. The electronic baryonyx stands a little over 5.5 inches tall, and is 8 inches long from head to tail. This release included a collector's card like other figures from the first and second series, and also included a piece of capture gear. The sculpt on this one is interesting. The head sculpt is sort of correct for a baryonyx, having that long crocodile shaped head, and it has the long claws on its fingers, but the body itself is sort of odd. The head is raised up really high and its tail is really close to touching the ground, kind of like the older depictions of dinosaurs even for the time this figure was released. This is another dinosaur that was not featured in the first film, so this may have had something to do with the inaccuracies or overall look of the figure. I think this is also the reason for it looking a little more cartoony than most figures from the first film, and the plastic used is pretty smooth feeling compared to all the other figures, except for maybe the electronic Gallimimus, which I feel is almost a companion figure to this one. This smooth plastic style reminds me a lot of the figures in the Chaos Effect line that would release four years later. That's not to say that the figure is completely lacking in detail. Despite this mostly smooth feeling plastic, there are some folds and different textures on the skin. The fold looking parts cover most of the main part of the body, and run underneath the jaw. The top of the head has some scales and bumps instead, and is almost completely smooth at the snout. So yeah, there is some details, but it does feel a bit lacking compared to other figures from the first film. Even some that are cheaper than it. An area where this does excel is its paint job. It's painted mostly green with black stripes and an almost lime green layer of paint down its neck, belly, and tail. There's also a little bit of this lime green on its foot. Well, just on one side on a few toes. Its fingernails and toenails are also unpainted. They remain that green color. And on the right leg, you'll find the JP mark. This one's number is 23. The green paint on the neck transitions to an almost pink looking paint on its snout and parts of its lower jaw. Here on the head, you'll also see its white painted teeth and black eyes. The inside of the mouth, which, unless you use the action feature you'll have to hold open, is painted pink. I really like this paint job as a whole. It gives a very reptilian feel, fitting for a dinosaur that shows a lot of resemblance to alligators and crocodiles. Moving on to the articulation, there's not a whole lot. The arms can move, though not very far, and just one of its legs is really poseable. The other leg is restricted to this figure's action feature movement. The box describes this feature as head thrust attack. To do this, you just pull back on its right leg, which causes the whole neck and head to move forward, and its jaws to snap. It also lets out a screeching noise, though the batteries on mine are dead. It's an okay feature, just a shame it restricts the legs a bit. This figure can only stand in one position, really. In terms of rarity, this figure is indeed on the harder to find side. It, along with the Gallimimus from this line, can fetch crazy prices, especially if it's never been opened. For a loose baryonyx, they usually go for $45 to $70 or more depending on the shape and if it has its card and capture gear piece. In its box and can go for over $400 or higher, so if you're looking for one in its box start saving, and hope one shows up on eBay. Of course, you can always get really lucky and find these for less. I actually found one of mine for $8 at a flea market. I would also like to add that this is the one and only release of this figure, and it would never get a repaint. Before I give my score for this figure, let's do some quick comparisons with other figures from this line. Here's the Electronic Baryonyx with a Kenner 4 inch human and a Mattel 3 and 3 quarter scale human. Here it is with a Gallimimus. Here it is with the Utah Raptor. And finally, here it is with the Tyrannosaurus Rex. For a rating out of 10, I give this one a 6. It has a decent paint job, but the sculpt itself and articulation leave a lot to be desired. Unless you are trying to complete the Series 2 line, I would recommend looking at the newer Mattel Baryonyx figures over this one. They are both way cheaper and better representations of the actual dinosaur. 
The cartooniness does give off some charm, but the rarity makes this one hard to recommend. It might not be worth the time or money. And that does it for the Series 2 Electronic Baryonyx. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.